Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, we are going to learn a very important concept which is out of order executions in a Java program. Why is this important? Because if we understand this concept clearly, it will help us to understand the advanced multi threading and concurrency issues when we cover thread safety and synchronization and related stuff. So please make sure that you watch this carefully. Let's get started. In order to understand the out of order execution in a Java program, we need to expand the mental model that we have created of how programs get executed or especially the Java programs. So we often think that when we run the program, the code executes sequentially one line at a time and line by line, which is generally true, but not always because any program order or execution order, which is not explicitly prohibited by the JVM specification is actually allowed by the JVM. We don't need to worry about these things as of now. These are some of the advanced concepts which we will cover in future videos. But the important thing is we need to expand the mental model. So here we have a very simple program which has a main method and it has two log messages where we are using the thread.currentThread thread method. These methods we have already covered in the earlier video. So do check out if you haven't. So what it will do if we run the program, we know it will print two log messages on the console. So we see main printed A and then main printed B. Main is the name of main thread because by default JVM creates a main thread when we run a program. So this is the name of that main thread and hence we see main printed A and main printed B. And we understand it clearly because there are two lines. So first this line will be executed. So it will print main printed A. And then this line will be executed. So we see main printed B one after another. Now let's see what happens when we start a new thread in the main method. So we will start a new thread. It will be a platform thread and we are going to use the thread builder. We will give it a name custom and then we will pass it a runnable. Now what this runnable will do in this thread, we will simply add two more log messages printed C and printed D. So what will happen when JVM executes this additional code? It will print custom printed C and custom printed D because custom is the name of this thread. All right. This code will be executed by this thread. So we will see custom printed C and custom printed D. Let's run it again. And here you can see main printed A, main printed B, custom printed C and custom printed D. Here we see all the log messages in the perfect sequence A, B then followed by C and D because as we understand this code will be executed sequentially. So it's natural to think that JVM will execute these two lines first in order and then it will execute this piece of code which will start a new thread and then these two lines will be printed on the console. So in the perfect order. But this is not the case when we deal with multiple threads. Here coincidentally we see the output in the same sequence and that is one of the most important things with Java multi-threading because when we are working with multiple threads, the actual scheduling is dependent on the runtime. JVM has its own thread scheduler and then it works with the operating system to schedule the native threads, the corresponding native threads. We understand these linkings. We have covered this in one of the earlier videos. So the output may vary from system to system. And even if I run the same program again, I may get a different output. So we can give it a try again. Let's rerun. So even after multiple retries, I did not get the out of order execution, but that is perfectly acceptable and expected actually. So let me do one more thing. Let me add few more log messages in the main thread like this. And like this. So now we have six log messages Four are coming from the main thread and two are coming from the custom thread. Let's rerun. And now you can see the out of order execution. So ideally what should happen, we should see these two log messages first, which is main printed A, main printed B. Then because JVM will execute this piece of code, so we should see two log messages for the custom thread, which is custom printed C, custom printed D. And then when JVM executes this piece of code, it should print printed E, main printed F in the end, but it's not happening here. So that's what I meant by out of order execution. So what is happening here? How can we make sense of this? 
and uh, this is actually very normal in the multi-threaded program especially with the java programming so let's spend some time on this one so that we understand this thing clearly so as i said we need to work on the mental model we need to understand or we need to identify two things what is the sequential or the serial part of the code and what is the multi-threaded part of the code so the first one will be the main thread which will be created automatically by the JVM for the main method and the second one is the custom thread which we are creating. So there are two threads and these two threads are running concurrently and we know because of the JVM scheduler and the operating system thread scheduler they run concurrently and they can run in any order as they get the chance. So it's not guaranteed that main will always run first before the custom thread they could run in any order it depends on the runtime system. So maybe the main thread was running and while it was printing some of the log messages there was a context switch and this CPU or the operating system scheduled or picked this one. So in that case even if the main thread has not finished its job the custom thread will now run and it will get a chance to run its piece of code which is basically these two log messages. That is the code that this custom thread will run. So maybe when main thread was running it only printed these two lines and before it could print these two lines there was a context switch and so custom thread got a chance so what it will do it will start running this code and it will try to print these two lines in one go while it is still running on the cpu but again there is another possibility that it could only print c and a context switch happened right so these are all the possibilities that we need to understand because these two are different threads which are running concurrently now coming back to the identifying the sequential and the parallel part of the code so we know actually this piece of code and this block here belongs to the main thread that will be directly executed by the main thread so the order is kind of guaranteed for a single thread so the execution of a single thread will generally be executed in the same sequence so if we talk about these two blocks here right so in these two blocks we can assume that the lines will be printed in the same sequence which is a b and then and then e and f now coming to this block although this is being executed by the main thread it belongs to main thread kind of but here we are starting a new thread so that is a parallel execution or a concurrent execution so there is no guarantee that this block this block and this piece of code will execute in the same sequence which is from start to finish this is not guaranteed this block will execute in a different thread but what we can assume in the same way that when custom thread starts its execution we should see these two lines in order which means c will be printed first and then d will be printed so let me clear everything so that we can focus on the sequence of execution so what kind of sequence did we get here let's rerun the program all right so here we have the output now let's understand the sequence here so we know from the main thread first we will see a then b so this must be in order and here we see a and b are in the same order then for the custom thread c and d must be in the same order and so here we see c and d in the same order and then in the end there were two more log messages printed e and printed f which will be executed by the main thread so they must be in the same order so here we see e and f in the same order so even the custom thread and main thread can be out of order notice the code executed in the same thread is still in the order so that is something we need to understand now let's rerun the same program one more time at this time we see another possible order so here notice uh, which line is coming from the main thread and which is coming from the custom thread so from main thread we see a and b in the order then e and then in the end f right and from the custom thread we see c first and then d so while these four lines are completely out of order but if we just focus on two different threads then we can see for the main thread the sequence is a b e and f which is valid and for the custom thread we have the sequence c and d so c is coming before d and in the same way a and b are coming before e and f for the main thread so while it could be different for the first time but if you give it some time if you understand it carefully this will make sense because these order of executions are actually allowed by jvm and when you run the same program you may see a different order 
or you may have to retry the same program again and again to get a different order. This is not deterministic. This is highly dependent on the runtime system. This is highly dependent on the JVM and the underlying operating system. And that is why multi-threading and concurrency is difficult because we cannot predict the order of different threads. They can run in any order whenever they get a chance or whenever they get scheduled by the operating system and the availability of CPU cores. So with this knowledge, we will now move on and cover a different topic in the next video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.